this guy is simply the best. There's no other way to put it. Uh, I've known him for uh, a couple decades now, and I'm, I'm honored and pleased to be able to say that. A longtime colleague of mine from back in the day at the Worldwide Leader, now the MLB Network Insider, Peter Gamage, joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show again. Peter, thanks for calling in. Rich, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So Josh Hamilton will not be disciplined any further. What to make of all this, Peter? I think it's been one angel's official said to me the other day. This has, been one, this has been the overriding, most confusing issue that he's ever really dealt with. They really don't know what to do. Um, you know, I understand. Um, I, I mean, I really think that the commissioner's office thought they could discipline him. As it turned out, the arbitrator said they could not because it happened in the off season, and it, 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 it sort of it does not violate the the, uh, the drug policy. But at the same time, I mean, the Angels really don't know what to do. I mean, I have to say that I think at this point, um, the Angels would like to be clear of all this. They would like to move on, um, have the roster that they have, and, and move on. But there is also something in me that says that I really wonder what would happen to Josh Hamilton if he didn't have baseball. And, and you know, all the times that he's fallen have been in the off season with – too much free time. And, um, you know, and, and that said, I, really what I believe is that Josh needs baseball more than the Angels need Josh. Hmm. And that's a very, you know, as, as, as a human being, I feel for him in this situation. Uh, and, um, you know, I understand the Angels want to win, all the rest. Um, I think it's just at this point, it's gotten to be so confusing. And so, okay, when is he available? When isn't he available? Um, and also, I mean, what is he going to be when he's there? Um, you know, they made a couple of moves um, in the off season, and they, they now think, well, with Calhoun and with Trout um, and, um, you know, with Colin Cowgill and a couple of other outfielders, Matt Joyce, but they have enough. And they can get by, and they can win, and and, uh, uh, and yet that contract looms over them, and they have to figure out what to do. It's, yeah, I, I mean, you, it's, it's tragic in a lot of ways. I mean, I know a lot of people would say it isn't tragic because he's uh, overindulging or abusing himself, but at the same time, addiction is is, is a tragedy in itself. Now you're you're right about that, Peter, and. You know, with all due respect to Calhoun and Colin Cowhill, Cow Gill, pardon me, and uh, Matt Joyce, former Tampa Bay Ray, now out there in Southern California, uh, if if Josh Hamilton can be the bopper right there with Pujols and the rest of that lineup, that would that would be not a game changer because we are talking about a team that that had one of the best records in baseball last year. Um, that said. The two questions you asked, when can he come back and who will he be if and when he does come back? I'd love for you to answer those two questions because that, that, well, that I, I don't think that they, they don't know. And they're really not sure where he is in his career as far as um, his focus um, and where he is in terms of injuries because he's had a great many injuries. Um, they rather have the stability of knowing – who can play and who can't every day. And, and I think the Angels' pitching is uh, marginally improved. Uh, Pujols looks like a different guy this spring. I mean, the plantar fasciitis is cleared up, and, and uh, he got, his knee has been um, really well strengthened. I mean, he looked like the Albert Pujols of three or four years ago this spring, and um, Freeze looks much better. I, I think that they really believe they're – they were the winningest team in the league last year. I think that they feel they can be that good again. Yep. And they, they were just allowed to move forward on a straight line. But um, it's you know, it's also impossible to eat all the money and just say release Josh Hamilton. It's it's a, it's a very complicated situation. One that that um, I think the Angels are better than a lot of people think. I think that you know the Angels in Seattle will end up in a very good race in the American League West. But the question is, what will Josh do to that to that talent race? And I, I don't think anybody knows. I know Mike Sosha doesn't know, and Jerry Depoto, and and uh, I don't think any of the players really know exactly where they're going to be at, at this point in the middle of July or August.
MLB Network 17 hours of live opening day coverage begins Monday 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Visit MLB find MLBnetwork.com for your local channel listings. Peter Gammons of MLB Network joining me here right now. There, there's a huge bandwagon forming in Seattle. I know that Peter. Everyone believes that they 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 they're loaded for bear. I'm wondering what you think of the back end of their starting rotation though, uh, and and how viable a threat do you really believe the Seattle Mariners can be in in the AL this year? Oh, I think they can be very good. I, I, I really do. I mean, I think that they're, they're really well um, they're really well set up to be very dangerous in the postseason. Um, but um, I think that the, having the two young pitchers, Taiwan Walker and James Paxson, uh, in the three four holes of that rotation behind um, Felix and Iwakuma, I, I think they're going to be really good. They have a great bullpen. Um, it seems some nice as if they have 13 relievers. They don't, but it, it seems that way. Uh, and they have a lot of power in the bullpen. And I think that there's enough now. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know if Cruz is going to go hit any 35 home runs. Is sounds a tough part for a right-handed hitter. But I do think that he, he provides a lot of um, at least protection for Robinson Cano. And I think some of their other young players like Brad Miller uh, – have gotten a lot better. Kyle Seeger is an all-star. I like them a lot. I really do. I think that uh, uh, Jackson will have a year under his belt playing in that ballpark. And um, there's just something. I'll tell you. And I'll tell you what's really nice is that um, Robinson Cano carries himself with a uh, uh, with a grand presence. As a you know, for a guy that's making all that money, he he carries it very well. And there's a lot of dignity to him, and I think there's, he really when you're around the team, he makes such an effort to be a leader and a, and a mentor to the younger players. And I think it's you know, I think it's a story that kind of gets overlooked at how just what a person Robinson Cano has become, how he's matured into this really striking figure, not only one of the best players in the game, but a very important person who's accepted the the mantle of being the, the, the star and the and the, uh, and the headliner for the Mariners. I think it's great for that city and so forth. It's, it's going to be fun. That that would be a great place to be in October yeah. in the playoffs. I mean, it's amazing to me. There's been since 2001 that they were in the postseason. It's unbelievable. And the Seahawks will be up and running by then if, if uh, the Mariners are so lucky to be going deep into October. The Angels and Mariners uh, get that started on opening day as well. One of the more interesting opening day matchups for Major League Baseball in 2015. Are, are the uh, Washington Nationals, the presumptive favorites, uh, actually going to make some hay when it's all said and done? In the well, NL? I'll tell you, it's, we have to see where they are in terms of health. Their pitching is going to be great. But... Um, the Anthony Rendon knee problems are something of a concern. I mean, I would argue that next to Bryce Harper, he's the best player. Uh, I think Harper will have a monster year, but they have issue with worth. Is he going to be ready to start the season? Span is going to be out for probably another month. Um, you wonder, I worry about Rendon's knee injury lingering on. Um, so there are some questions there. And uh, I don't think that Marlins or Mets, both of whom are, are tremendously improved, can, can finish ahead of them. But I, I, I think the Nationals have sort of painted themselves into a position where if they don't get to the World Series, it's going to be a disappointment. And that anticipation mm -hmm. is it's, it's great, but it's also something of a curse. Um, because in the end, they're the team in the National League that's the most to lose. I think more than any other team. So it will be quite interesting. The other team that's really interesting to me is San Diego. Um, tremendous hoopla over getting the three slugging outfitters. But their pitching is really good. I, I said this to a couple people you see. I think of all the offseason signings, and there were obviously some Scherzer and Lester were great offseason signings, but I think James Shields is the most important for this reason. He is experienced in leading a pitching staff. I, I like the Padres pitching before they got him. But I also think that the fact that he's with San Diego and not with the Giants, who chose Jake Peavy over James Shields, he's not with the Dodgers. They took Brett Anderson over James Shields. I think the fact that he's in San Diego and not with those other two teams mm -hmm. Brings the Padres a lot closer in the pennant race and, and gives them a lot better chance to make at least a wild card. So I think that his is a 
it's he may not be the best player, but I think he's the most significant signing. Last question for you, Peter. What's in it for baseball to let Pete Rose back in the game? What's in it for baseball? Um, I think just that the goodwill that there are so many fans love. I think it's very difficult to do. And we've seen it with the hoopla. Well, what did Jared Cosart actually bet on, or did he really bet, or was his, was his Twitter account actually hacked? But you see that sign in every clubhouse. I think it's very hard to uh, put him back in a position so that he goes to the Hall of Fame. I guess he could be a guy that goes and you know works in the Reds organization and does functions for the Cincinnati Reds. But I mean, you know, Mark McGuire is coaching uh, and doing a tremendous job. That's fine. I think Barry Bonds will end up back with the Giants eventually. But I think it's very difficult to say, oh, by the way, uh, Pete, what you signed off on in 1989 is now forgiven. And I think it's very hard because people have to be reminded just how serious it is to be, to think about betting on baseball games. But he's and, at, at age 72, though. I mean, wouldn't it be for – just to say, okay, you can get in the hall, but everything else you still have to – you signed what you signed back in 89, and that's it. Like some sort of splitting of the atom here, Peter. Well, I just think that – I think it's awfully hard for them to put him in the hall at this point after 20 years out. Um, hmm. It'll also be very interesting. If they decide to make him eligible, whether he would get the votes. Because um, huh. I don't think any of these uh, – Steroid issues, uh, era stars, Bonds, McGuire, um, even Clemens. I don't think they're going to make the Hall of Fame. I mean, the, the window is only 10 years now, not 15 years. I don't think we've passed enough on that. And I think it might be very hard for Rose to get 70%. Uh, I think it will be very difficult, particularly if, you, if, if you, there are enough people voting that remember what Bart Giamatti went through in that whole Rose uh, investigation and uh, ensuing uh, uh, interviews and so forth. It was, uh, it was terribly trying. I just remember talking to, to uh, um, uh, Jim Hattie at his house on Martha's Vineyard the afternoon that he eventually died. And I, the, the strain on him was staggering. It was almost hard to hold the conversation. He was so exhausted from it. And I, I think a lot of that will be brought back, and I think it may make it very difficult for Pete to get through. Peter, thanks as always for calling in. Like I said, you're the best. That is not hyperbole. You are, and I can't wait till the next time we get a chance to talk. Great. I, I look forward to it, Rich. Thank you very much. You bet. That's Peter Gammons. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs> 